Great. Um, hello, buonasera, good evening, um, everyone. I'm very happy to welcome you this uh, Saturday night to the open day at the European Cultural Academy in Venice. My name is Alexandra Lecour. Uh, I'm the director of the Academy. And today with me, I have my colleagues, uh, Matteo Magnani and uh, Sara Longo, who is also has another colleague of hers. Uh, Adam, hi, nice to uh, see you uh, with us. Um, we have a session uh, today dedicated to teaching and learning through art. Um, it's a series of uh, courses that we developed uh, at the Academy um, that we're providing to teachers um, under Erasmus Plus um, framework. Um, the Academy main base is in Venice. Uh, we are the largest training center for teaching through arts in the city. Um, we hold our courses in three beautiful palaces in the historic center. Two of them are located on Grand Canal. Um, and we also have uh, locations in two other European cities, in uh, Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and from 2023 in uh, Barcelona, Spain. Uh, today, we have a exciting program uh, for you that I hope you enjoy. Um, our program manager, Sara Longo, will present the, our academic approach and the uh, curriculum for 2023. And then uh, we have an um, alumni, one of the participants of the course, uh, who uh, Miriam Coster joining us from Ireland. And um, she will talk about her project that her school did. It's a fantastic project um, and her experience at the Academy. Um, if you have, meanwhile, any questions, please leave them at the uh, chat section. And we have a dedicated Q&A time for the questions for me, Sara, Miriam, Matteo. Um, and we'll try to um, answer all of them. Um, this session is going to be recorded. And then after uh, uh, tonight, you will receive a link to our YouTube channel where you can find um, the recording. Um, so I would like to give a floor to Sara. Thank you very much. Hi. Matthias, sir, you can stop sharing the screen, I think. Yeah. Great. I hope you can hear me correctly. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Alexandra, for your introduction. I coordinate teacher trainings. Uh, teacher training of ECA are six-day courses that take place in three cities in Europe. And uh, tonight, I will take 10 minutes to introduce our, let's say, the uh, story of these courses, the, the, a little bit of the content, and moreover, the organization and the calendar for 2023. You are joining today because you already joined the course with us and you want to come back, or you, it's the first time you asked for Erasmus Plus and want to come in mobility. So I'm going to try to uh, make everybody happy by explaining what we do. I am here in Palazzo Michele, it's where everything happened for the first time, where we started our courses. It's a palace, one of the oldest palaces of the historical center of Venice, 10 meters from Rialto Bridge. Um, and uh, in Palazzo Michele, we gave these classes um, for teachers of all Europe. The main title of the main class is Teaching and Learning Through Art. The idea, the main value of our, our courses is that um, every teacher, every teacher for every discipline, every level has to deal with art in a moment in his uh, life. Um, and if a teacher likes to go to museum in his personal life, he or she will want to introduce this passion, this personal passion in the classroom. And kids need to um, learn that everybody can be an artist, um, and also everybody can not be an artist, but want to do art. We all start our life by drawing, by doing art. So in these classes, all of them, we give you tools to implement your pedagogy with 
visual performative musical arts, depending on the course. So now I'm gonna go a little bit in detail of all this by going simply on the website and talking to you about our schedule for 2023. Alexander, can you tell me if my screen is visible? Yes, it's all working. Good. So if you go on European Cultural Academy, if you type on Google eca.art or europeanculturalacademy.com, it's the same, you come on our home uh, website. We do various activity. The one that interests you is the educators page. So I go through with you. You click on educators, teaching through art. It's our base uh, topic, part of Erasmus Plus program. Uh, yes, I will uh, say two words about that at the end. And you go uh, scroll down and you have all our topics. Teaching and learning through art is the course I was talking about. Maybe Miriam Cotter will talk, you, uh, will talk a little bit about it. It's the one she, she participated in. Uh, it's a course where you have uh, three uh, museum visits in the week and an average 20 hours in our palaces of pedagogical workshops about how to use art in the classroom. The class is for every teacher, not for art teachers, but for teachers that love to go to the museum and want to discover Venetian collection and how to use them in the classroom. Second one, Creativity for Teachers of Foreign Language. It's a course for all language teachers. For all languages, we have uh, teachers of Italian, Spanish, Dutch that come. And it's about visual thinking strategies and how to put art into your language classroom. On the same topic of English, we will have in 2023 a music course. It's not really a music course. It's a course about how to integrate music in the classroom for all teachers that need to make kids sing or do music and through English. The last uh, topic that we do in Venice about language is how to improve your English because in the classroom, you often have to do a course in English or teach English or anything where you use English when it's not your first language. So we give you creative tools also through visual thinking and visual arts. Still in Venice, we have a course about digital, digital and creativity. How can a kid get focused in classroom while he has his video game in a set of his mind calling him and saying, come and play with me. How is that video game? built to get his attraction and how does a classroom have to be built to get a kid's focus. Last course, uh, no, uh, one before last course in Venice, uh, European Cultural Heritage Explore Venice. This course is more about art history for art lovers of all uh, kind of all kind of educators about the, the, the rich uh, Venetian art heritage that is from its foundation and to, to contemporary art with Biennale with a main focus on Renaissance with a, a great visit of uh, Galerie dell'Accademia Museum. These courses are all in English, okay? You see my screen, you scroll, you go into and you can uh, register directly from this course page. Then still in Venice, we have the same course in French for those who are interested and we will present on the next hour, uh, the courses in French. In Amsterdam, we have a course on teaching and language through art with storytelling. This course I will show you in the calendar after is given in Italian, French, and we're gonna start giving it in English also, uh, on the on the 2023 it's not yet on the website you can see more courses to be here soon it will be soon but most of all write me an email if you're interested and last but not least it's our new uh, like our, our, our newborn baby in april 2023 the 10th of april we will start a course in barcelona the idea is to apply the same methodology of teaching through arts with collections of Barcelona with a special focus on architecture, of course, 
because we will visit Gaudi, we will visit Van der Rohe Foundation, and also uh, Miro Museum and Miro's workshops for kids in, uh, in school. So that is about our courses. You go, uh, let's take this page, for example. You go on a page that interests you, you, you read the description, and you have on the bottom of the page, the full details are OED, the price of the course that is every time the same, and the dates. This is the most important, okay? So when you see a date that interests you, you register. Don't worry, uh, you, your credit card won't be uh, activated at that point, you just say, do you have Erasmus Plus funding or not? And that I will finish on this topic. So if your school already has an accreditation or a short-term project, some funding, uh, some funding active to come, you click yes. And there you will have a form that you will submit and I will receive it automatically and get in touch with you to mm, subscribe, to register you directly on the course that you want. If you do not have an Erasmus Plus grant, this will send me also a, a, an email and I will lead you through the steps. So Erasmus Plus, for those who don't know, is a funding, a, a huge funding that the European Union gives to teachers for training all, all lifelong uh, training. We are a course provider, so when you fill in the form, we are in courses and training. You fill our OED and you will see that we appear as a course provider. Erasmus Plus funds the, um, hotel, travel, and course, and also a per diem for, for your food in these three cities with ECA course. You can ask the funding two times a year, in February and October. Now, we just had, uh, two days ago, the new date announced that is February 23rd. So for people, so th those of you, let me stop sharing or maybe, yeah, okay, I'll stop sharing. Uh, for those of you who uh, do not have Erasmus Plus yet, I suggest you get in touch with us. We will send you a step-by-step -step guide and you will um, see that it's quite easy and moreover that you're not alone in the process, that there is a series of professionals uh, that do the, the process with you. Uh, the most important is your national agency. In every European Erasmus Plus participating country, there is a national agency. We give you the link in our step-by-step -step guide and you can contact them to have help for, to get your uh, funding for mobility. As I said, these mobilities start um, our six day courses. They start on Monday. I recommend you arrive on Sunday, but that is all to see when you will uh, organize yourself for coming because uh, courses so start uh, on Monday morning until Saturday. The courses deliver uh, an official EU certificate that is called Europass certificate. So you go away with, of course, all the tools and the content of the course but also uh, a signed certificate from us to give to your school and to your Erasmus Plus responsible. That's quite all for me. I'm sure I forgot a lot of things, but I'm sure you will ask me questions about them. Uh, now, I would like very briefly to give the floor to my colleague. We, we are um, a quite big staff now in uh, Venice. Uh, we live in Venice. I'm, I didn't introduce myself. Sorry, I'm Italian. I live in Venice and um, I coordinate all te teacher trainings, but also I, 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 yeah, I, I, I coordinate trainers, your trainers. And we have one trainer here. His name is Adam Evans. He teaches language through art. And I would like for five minutes um, to let him talk about what he does with us. Thank you, Sarah. You're Much appreciated. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Well, depending on where you are, it's evening here in Venice. Um, like Sarah said, my name is Adam Evans. Um, I am not Italian. I'm actually from Houston, Texas in the United States, but I've been an English teacher for the past 15 years in nine different countries on three different continents. Um, now I'm currently based in Venice. I got my master's degree here in literature and literary theory and fell in love with the city. And so I decided to stay and was lucky enough to find this job with Sarah and Alexandra here at the ECA. 
a little bit about the courses that will be on offer in 2023, as well as the courses that we have done this previous year and 2022. Um, let's start with the creativity in the foreign language classroom. Um, this is a course that takes some pedagogical approaches that have been very well researched and very well documented um, through numerous PhDs. I think one of them actually comes from Harvard, was developed there. And it's a two-part pedagogical approach to how to integrate visual arts into the language learning classroom. This course is not specifically geared to English. It can be applied to any language that any teacher might be engaged with. So for example, I had some students that were um, professors of Estonian in Estonia for refugees coming from Russia, fleeing the um, what's going on in that part of the world. I had uh, two teachers that were Irish, that were Irish teachers. They, they were teaching Gaelic and they applied the same methodologies that we were discussing and learning about in English to their actual L2 acquisition classrooms. Um, the two pedagogical approaches that we use in this class, one are called visual thinking strategies or VTS for short, and the other is CLEAL, which is content and language integrated learning. We spend about a day, so these are two full sessions from 10 in the morning until 5 p.m. on each of these uh, pedagogical approaches where we cover the theory in one part and then we actually put it into practice in the second part of the day. But if you're coming to Venice, it would be really, really terrible if we didn't show you around, kind of teach you also a little bit about the city, help you organize, orient, orientate yourself while you're here. So one day is also spent um, teaching about Venetian history. And then in the afternoon, we go on a walking tour of the city for about three hours. Um, not only this, there are two museum visits that are, well, it depends. It, it depends on what time of year you're here. It's either a trip to one of the immaculate museums that are here, such as the Peggy Guggenheim or the Academia, or if you're here during the time of the Biennale, we go to either to the Biennale dell'Arte or the Biennale dell'Architettura. And that would be normally on, we have an entire day separated or set apart for those. Um, there are also two other courses that will be offered in 2023, which is basically this same course that I was just discussing, but strictly targeted for English language acquisition. And this will focus a, li a little bit more on how to utilize grammar and syntax, lexicon, things like this in the classroom geared specifically towards English language learners. and whatever needs they might have, as opposed to a more general uh, approach to the course, which is what we have been doing in 2023. So very, very similar, but slightly different form, a bit more detailed in terms of specifically towards English language acquisition. Um, the final course that we're going to be offering is um, teaching your students how to sing in English. I will not be singing um, <laughs> if that is part of the what makes or breaks a deal, please, I will not sing. Somebody else who is a far better singer will be here to sing. Don't you sing, you sing, right? So maybe Sarah will even sing for us. But this is also a way to help students acquire better pronunciation, rhythm, syntax, intonation. One of the constant questions I get in my, in my classroom is how do I improve my accent? And this is something that Singing actually can help you improve. Um, that's kind of a misnomer about diminishing accents, but increasing rhythm, intonation, stress, things like this. Singing is a great way to practice this. And we'll be offering this course as well as the other two in 2023, beginning in February, correct? And February is for uh, February is the first cutoff. one, and April will be singing and improve your English. There we go. So if you have any questions about the three courses that I will be taking part in, please don't hesitate to write a message in the chat. Um, is there anything else? Okay, super, no. Cool, yep. right. well, that's it for me. Thank you all for your attention. I wish you all a wonderful day or evening and hopefully I will see some of y'all here in the upcoming year. He stays, eh? It doesn't go. No, I'm not going, I'm just signing. Thank you very much. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Um, 
I, I, I noted two things I forgot to say during my uh, short time uh, about the, the courses. First of all, is that we are based in Italy, but we also host Italian, we also invite Italian teachers to come to Amsterdam or Barcelona, of course. So the storytelling course is also in Italian and the um, uh, Kids in the City is also in Italian in Amsterdam. We have uh, three locations, three languages, uh, a lot of trainers and a lot of teachers, more than 500 uh, teachers came since uh, one year, in one year now. Um, and that is why I, I must uh, finish on this note, if you have, if your school has an accreditation that allows many schools to put together, so a consortium or a big group of teachers to go away on the same date, please write me about that because we uh, host programs that on other dates than those on the website. If you have a group of more than 12 teachers, you can come uh, by your own uh, in one of these three locations in our, in our, in our school in our academy to attend the course. So that's very important and um, and I hope it will happen again because it was great in 2022. Okay, so now let's go on with uh, uh, someone I invited to talk. I'm very pleased she could actually, we changed the date of this open day, uh, not really for her, but she couldn't attend the first date. So I'm very happy that this happens today. So Miriam can be with us. I met uh, Miriam by email more than a year ago. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, because she organized a mobility for her and her colleagues in October, 2021 in Venice. She came for the course Teaching and Learning Through Art. And before letting the floor to her, I would like to show you a video that she sent to us uh, two months ago in September, and that really um, uh, made us be proud of our trainings. <laughs> ecco. Allora, uh, I will share my screen again. And then I would let Miriam talk. Miriam Cotta, and I'm a primary teacher here in the North Monastery Primary School, Skullwara Fatima. The North Monastery Primary School, also known as Skullwara Fatima, is an urban school on the north side of Cork City. We have eight mainstream class teachers and seven special education teachers. This year, we opened our second autism class in a purpose designed unit. Last September, we enrolled junior infant boys and girls for the first time. Inclusivity is at the heart of our school and our ethos. The project was called Enhancing Visual Arts Education. It aimed to put the visual arts and creativity at the centre of learning. A course in Venice called Using Works of Art in the Classroom was identified as being the most relevant and contact was made with the Educational Cultural Academy. Having an audience was key to pupils' involvement. During COVID school closures, tasks were shown on the school online platform weekly. All artworks used readily available household items and winners were announced on social media. This artwork also appeared in the Arts Council of Ireland Creative School Week, while an associated video featured on national TV in May 2021. One of our photos was used in the Creative School's 2022 national poster campaign. The Walkabout Art Gallery was born because classes could not mix during COVID restrictions. By reimagining and repurposing our school corridors to act as a Walkabout Art Gallery, and by installing additional notice boards, one class at a time could wander about to view the artwork. It was heavily influenced by my exposure to the architectural Biennale in Venice, which was part of my mobility. To date, Mondrian, Bruegel, Dali and Yoyoy, a female artist, have inspired our artwork. One class attended an art workshop on equality and the rights of the child in the Duxman Gallery, while two classes benefited from a six-week program of meeting a different artist every week. Another class took part in an E20 project. We are proud of the implementation of our project because it was a whole school project and all pupils from junior infants to sixth class, including pupils in the autism unit, contributed artwork. We are delighted for our pupils because their artwork reached a national audience. We have a beautiful space because we adapted our building by reimagining and repurposing our school corridors as a walkabout art gallery. The school and our pupils have benefited so much from teachers acquiring best European practice through an Erasmus mobility and feeling empowered to develop their own creativity. 
Our project, Enhancing Visual Arts Education, was the school's first foray into the Erasmus Plus program, and it has been a resounding success. The children feel a great sense of achievement that their efforts in school have been recognised by a European level award. This award increases the acceptance of all future mobilities. Possibilities for future collaboration with other schools and teachers means that we can continue to learn together, promoting creativity and sustainability. Erasmus Plus Mobility and Lergus, the Irish National Agency, offers amazing opportunities for schools and pupils. Staff who take part in continuous professional development at European level embrace new ideas and teaching methods, ensuring that all pupils benefit from the most up-to-date teaching strategies. Skull Wirra Fatima, the North Mon Primary School, are absolutely delighted to accept this award. The project may have ended in 2021, but the learning and influence of Erasmus Plus continues. Hi. Hello, thank you very much, Sarah and Adam. I was very interested in what you had to say because I do feel that a lot of what I have applied could have also referred to language teaching, history. I think that using a work of art is a great source of inspiration for many different topics in education. So I suppose what I will start doing is I will go in and just talk briefly about my project and what I did. And then maybe what I think now that I'm doing a second project, I am in the middle of another mobility and um, that what I would have done differently. And um, I suppose really it's a lot of it goes back to kind of planning and being prepared and even recording as you go along. So just to recap, to put it in context, we are a very disadvantaged school. Um, in Ireland, it's called a DESH Band 1. Um, there is a, an economic poverty, but there is also a poverty of mind. Um, for example, before I started um, on the project, I did a survey with the children and I asked them to name um, artists, that they European artists, and some children could not even name one. And to be honest, I was quite um, surprised. I then asked them to name an art gallery in our city of Cork, and we'd have about three or four, which I would have thought were quite well known. And a lot of the children couldn't name an art gallery. So art galleries were not places that they actually went into. Art wasn't something that they were familiar with. So the project began and unfortunately uh, COVID struck. So I was supposed to be going to Venice in April and in February, um, the first signs of COVID appeared and by the beginning of March, all the schools closed. Immediately, Irish teachers, I'm sure with the rest of Europe, we went up online. We have an online platform, which was uh, GDPR Safe for Children. Um, so homework was being sent out and the core curriculum was being taught. And suddenly I was noticing, um, and I suppose very conscious that I was doing this Erasmus project, that there was actually nothing to do with art. And I discovered two things. One was that um, when I did put the first task up, and the first task was actually to draw a superhero. Now we came to the idea that a superhero would be a good theme because um, during us, I just noticed somebody said they can't hear. Is that me or, or somebody else? No, no. Yeah, Miriam, we can hear you perfectly. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send a message through the chat. Okay, this, that's uh, fine. I just got a fright there. Excuse me, I beg your pardon. Thank, so thank you, the, the first um it was we identified the superhero because I think in the middle of a COVID pandemic, we actually needed a superhero. So the first task we had was draw a superhero. And to be absolutely honest, only a few pupils got involved. So they were to send their entries back onto the online platform. Um, and it wasn't until we actually posted the three winning entries on social media. So they went on Twitter, on Facebook and on Instagram with the child's name, no other details, that the following week when I set a task, which was to dress up as a superhero and to send in a photograph, suddenly the, um, the entries started coming in by the third um. The third task was to design a mod. So I sent out a whole lot of information about Mondrian and um, sent out a little podcast. The children were then asked to design a Mondrian cloak for their superhero. Well, the entries were now flooding in because these children, they were at home. 
their parents were at home. They were starved for something to do, something different. So the entries came in. And I suppose that was the first time that I actually discovered that in order to encourage art, you actually need an audience. And I think that is something that is overlooked a lot of the time, because if you if a child comes home to mom or dad and posts something up on the fridge, yes, mom and dad will see it. But when it is given recognition by others other than their teachers and perhaps um, other than parents at home, it actually has meaning. So everything in the project after that was about finding and targeting an audience. Other tasks we had was something called laundry art, which I saw on the television. Um, it was where you lay out clothes um, on the ground. And when you look at them from upstairs or from an upstairs window, they make a picture. So bear in mind, we very disadvantaged school. They didn't have paints. They didn't have paint brushes. They didn't have the kind of things that some other homes would have. Everything had to be using readily available um, objects. One of the final um, projects or one of the final thing was to dress up as the nemesis of the superhero. In other words, the villain. Um, and you had to use items from the recycling bin. Now, they were probably the most interesting of all the tasks. And one of the and one of those photos was um, actually used by the National Arts Council of Ireland um, to promote this year's um, Creative Schools Week. So when we came back to school, we were now completely um, isolating class by class. There was no mixing. We had separate lunch breaks. We had separate everything. And um, again, it wasn't possible for me to go around to the different classes. It wasn't possible for teachers to share expertise. So all of the artwork that had been sent in during um, the COVID uh, pandemic into me, I then um, contributed to the National Arts Council of Ireland Creative Schools Week. And there were five um, one hour sessions and our school featured in three of these. So for children who were able to sit and watch for an hour during the school day, a program about you know, the creative arts and it included all kinds of arts. To see their artwork up on national TV was an amazing achievement for them. And again, it made them more interested. So anytime I then kind of said, listen, I'm going to do this, they were kind of saying, will you make us famous? You know, will you make us famous? And it wasn't the fame. It was, will somebody other than ourselves and our teachers see what we're doing? So to, to have an audience was hugely important. Then I suppose the next thing was within the COVID restrictions, um, the pupils wanted to see their art and other pupils wanted to see uh, what they were doing. So I came up with this idea that we would clear all the corridors. We would give each class a specific half hour. We would open all the windows, the doors, make sure we had huge ventilation um, and we let one class at a time roamed the corridor. So literally, we have four long corridors. Each one of the corridors was turned into an art gallery. So the pupils could actually walk along and look at the art gallery. There were The classes were inside in the room and could hear the comments from outside. And that probably was the most interesting thing because sitting as a pupil inside and hearing somebody say, oh my God, look at this, this is amazing. Have a look at this, this is fantastic. So that was a huge success. And the whole idea of the Walkabout Art Gallery is something that we have actually continued. So even just a few days ago, I was distributing um, a, a sheet on Monet and particularly his Christmas or his snow scenes. Um, and I can see already that the artwork in the Monet style is beginning to appear on the walls because the pupils then make a really, really big effort to produce some really good art because A, their names are at the bottom and B, they know that the rest of the school is going to be walking around looking at it. Um, what other aspects of the project would have been I made contact with uh, the Glucksman uh, Museum of Art in Cork, which is associated with UCC. And a class went and did um, a, a day long workshop on equality and the rights of the child. So A, they were learning about their rights, which ties in with 
social, personal and health education. It also ties in with civics. And Adam, as you would have mentioned earlier, it ties in with uh, literature and literacy. Uh, the pupils wrote, they drew pictures, they came back and all of this um, work was posted in the school. Um, another class um, I discovered there was a fantastic company called um, Sample Studios and they have a six week um, program where and free of charge and it really was about looking to see what was available uh, free of charge. They, a different artist came into the school one day a week um, for two hours and taught printmaking one week, another week there was photography, another week we had, um, I think he was a local DJ and he came in with his musical and his chords and everything else and he was spinning, they absolutely loved it and it was to show that, you know, there are more aspects to um, careers than just, you know, going to university, that being a creative or being person or being an artist is as viable and as important as any other career. So I suppose what I think I also did um, an e-twinning project, and that was very, very interesting because it tied in with, again, literacy. The children were able to post their art for other schools in Europe to look at. So I think when I started this, putting this talk together, I decided that, you know, every pupil is an artist. But I suppose on top of that, I should add, every pupil is an artist, but every artist needs an audience. So what would I do differently if I was to do a project again on coming to Venice? I would certainly um, record everything I did because I was thrashing about afterwards when I was submitting my final report to try and put things um, to find the information, to find the worksheet, to find the photographs. I would set up a file on my computer, which is what I have done now, and it makes life so much easier. Um, I write, I had an action plan, who I would contact, why I would contact them and kept all the telephone numbers. Um, it was also very important um, and it's something that the national agencies are very, very keen on is that you would um, use local government bodies. Now my national aid and agency at Lergus was, were absolutely outstanding. They guided me through the application process. So between Sarah, in um, Venice and between my own national agency, um, there any queries that I had were answered really, really promptly. I think the Erasmus Plus, it's in, in Europe, it's to share best practice. They want you to succeed. Um, so I made contact with local galleries. We're still in contact. We still get invited to openings and to um, workshops that they are aware of the I suppose the financial constraints of the pupils. So they are very kind. They um, I think they appreciate the fact that we have given their um, their different endeavors so much publicity that they are willing to fund us and to invite us. So let me talk about Venice. Venice for me was a complete eye opener. I think I had spotted the course and I thought, yes, it sounds absolutely amazing. And to be absolutely honest, I was coming to Venice to see the architecture, to see the canals, to see, uh, to have the opportunity to explore. And I suppose for my, for myself personally, for our teachers and for the school, it has been life altering. I think we will never go back to teaching the way we used to teach. We learned an awful lot about art and how art can be used in the classroom, how art can be used to help with uh, literacy, numeracy, um, and all the other subjects. But I think it also gave us so much other information. For example, we met amazing French teachers. And um, I now understand how the French school system works. I understand how the Spanish and Portuguese school system works because we have pupils who arrive from all the other EU countries. And sometimes we are at a loss about what class to put them into. Now we have all this information on hand because we understand the schooling. We also understand um, the different subject areas and how it fits into our system of education. Um, the Venice itself was absolutely stunning. I was there in October. It was the most beautiful time of the year. I would be back there in an absolute heartbeat. I found the, um, the European Cultural Academy outstanding. Um, we had a tutor called Martha and 
I could not speak highly enough of her, uh, the notes, the presentations, the way she actually, I suppose, got us to think um, was absolutely amazing. Um, the, as Sarah mentioned, yes, there are trips around Venice. We went to the Architectural Biennale. Um, I certainly learned a huge amount from, from it. I still have about 40 pictures, which I think I'll probably be taking out one a month for the next few years of my teaching career and putting up as, you know, thought for the month. What do you think of this? What do you think it's about? Um, some amazing um, inspiration. The other teachers, as I said, were fantastic. The insight that I received from what, how they teach and what they teach, I think would probably go with me forever. So I suppose I owe a huge um, debt of gratitude to the European Cultural Academy. Um, and I would also say, if you have a project in mind, certainly uh, get on to Sarah. She's absolutely outstanding. And do talk to your national agency. They will certainly guide you through anything at all. So Sarah, I'll head back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Miriam. I, I'm, I'm happy to know a bit more about your project because I didn't know how it was born in this detail. So it, uh, it was very good to hear it. And we have like parallel paths. We have the same questions and how to uh, conduct them in a training. And you have the, the same problems in your school, how to, uh, how to uh, get to the, the, the kids and, and to um, get the kids to un understand that they need an audience and also how to get an audience uh, by, by being free, not being creative. So that's uh, really uh, important for us that we have this feedback for you, uh, from you. Thank you. Um, I would like to um, let us answer questions. We are uh, 20 participants log in. Uh, we can answer the questions, Adam, Miriam, me, also Alexandra. Uh, I would like before that, um, or while you uh, ask your question, just to uh, show just to show you the calendar for all courses 2023. I didn't want to take too much time before. It is going to be online soon and you can ask it uh, from me um, by email. Can you see it? Yes. Oh, thank you. Ah. This? There you go. Hmm, same thing. Can you all see the calendar? It's a bit I skewed. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Uh huh. Like this? Yeah. There. Better. Yes. Better. Better. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2023 yes. training. Uh, we we have a new uh, location that is Barcelona in Orange here, but also a new location in Venice, a new palace that we're going to take uh, uh, from from scratch on 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 January. It's a wonderful. I won't say anything because I want to leave the surprise. But um, just to say that we have a full document if you want to ask it to me. Uh, to have a more clear understanding, the blue is, is for Venice, orange for Barcelona, and green for Amsterdam. Um, please, uh, how do you want to proceed for questions while I leave this on? Mm, I think now, guys, I think now it's time for, for you to, to ask questions if you have some. But I actually thought I have a, a question for you. So you mentioned that in, in Venice, for Venice um, courses, uh, we usually visit uh, the Venice Biennale and some other museums. So could you tell a little bit uh, what Venice Biennale is? And Miriam mentioned that she she went to the Architecture Biennale. So what is it and uh, why we actually include the visits to the Biennale in the program? Great. So Biennale, is called, Biennale it means every two years because it is a show that is on the same topic every two years, but it actually happens every year. One year it is on contemporary art and the next year it's on architecture. Uh, it lasts six months. It's a huge industry for Venice. Uh, we are at the 59th edition that closes tomorrow, uh, that ends tomorrow. It's from April to uh, mid-November. Next year it will be from May to mid-November. 
Uh, this year it was about contemporary art, it is closing now, and next year it will be from, for architecture. So when Miriam Carter came, it was about architecture. What is it, is it about? There are two huge locations in Venice that host pavilions from all countries of the world. Each pavilion chooses someone or a few or well, several artists to exhibit on a topic that is chosen by uh, the curator of the whole Biennale. This year, for example, the topic was Milk of Dreams. It was about fantasy, imagination, dream, magic. And the curator was for the first time in 60 years a woman. So she, 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 she chose to put in honor, um, uh, to put focus on women artists. And of course, I can't say enough that it was an incredible Biennale, but it's ending to tomorrow, so I won't say it. It was uh, great. Uh, next year, we will have architecture. When we have programs in Venice between April, April and November, you spend almost two days in Biennale. We, we see it one time um, uh, with a guided tour and one time you go by yourself with all the tools you got from the court. More uh, over, you have a free afternoon in the week where we invite you to get lost in Venice and in, in addition to these two locations, Biennale has all over Venice in the classical museums, in Palazzo Ducale, in churches, uh, happenings, performances of contemporary art and architecture that you're very well invited, welcome to uh, see. Uh, in your free time. So our courses are based on contemporary art for the methodology and also for the visit when there is Biennale. When there is not Biennale, so from in courses from November to April, uh, we have a, a partnership with Guggenheim uh, Museum, you know, Guggenheim Collection, um, so modern artists, and we visit the, the collection on the first days of the, of the training. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. I think it's uh, it's good to get an overview. And uh, I see some people are asking for Instagram. I shared that in uh, our chat, um, and uh, we have some exchanges of the Instagram accounts. I find it fantastic, and I'm really, you know, grateful to to Erasmus Plus that allows this kind of uh, collaborations. And indeed, indeed, the course is very important, but opportunity to meet your colleagues from other EU countries. I think that's what makes it uh, special. And then you are in a different setting, Venice, Barcelona, or Amsterdam. Uh, so um, I think that is, this makes a very big part of the experience. This is why we try to uh, make the program intense, but you know, also leave time for um, cocktails at the end. We leave a Wednesday afternoon free so you can really enjoy the city or have a long lunch with, the, with your colleagues and get to know each other better. And, you know, from these kind of conversations, new European projects um, uh, are born. And so, and, 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 you know, these kind of conversations inspire new, new ideas for sure. I suppose I personally thought that the, the Biennale, even though I was going for, I suppose, art, um, I thought that going to the architectural Biennale, even though a lot of it was about architecture, there were so many artworks. Um, and when, you know, Martha left and we were left to our own devices, it's a place that you could happily have spent another four, five, six hours there. A beautiful spot. And indeed, the whole lot of Venice to me is just one great big architectural gem. There wasn't any street that you'd go down that you wouldn't see something absolutely amazing. I don't know how many times I nearly fell into the water trying to see around the corner. And then I suddenly realized I actually need to go on one of the canal boats because if I don't, I will end up in the water. So the whole lot of, of Venice was just amazing as a place. Yeah, yes, that's that, that's true. And, you know, um, I also always say that the best direction in Venice is random, because this is a city that it's okay to get lost. It's an island. So the worst thing that could happen is that you end up at the waterfront and enjoy the view on the lagoon. Um, so it's, uh, it's indeed uh, a, a quite an inspiring city. Um, I see that we have some participants that will come to Hello, Venice. Great. Hi, do you have a question? 
primary school teaches arts and English, fantastic. Uh, hello, no, I don't have any question for the moment, but I will be coming, I am used to Communius Erasmus and so on, so I know what Miriam was saying about meeting colleagues and so on, and the four teachers will come with me. We are quite new in every European system, the Erasmus system, so maybe they will jump in and that's great. I think I will jump in again too, but <laughs> good. it's good. Can't wait to come. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Yumia. you. We were very happy to have you. We've been sending, uh, writing emails with Catherine. I never saw you uh, yet. Um, <laughs> voilà. Uh, what also, um, I, I heard um, Alexander talk about our, 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 our experience of Venice. And it, 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 don't forget that with Erasmus Plus accreditation, you can come back. That is why we open new topics in Venice because teachers wanted to come back. So they came, some came twice to do the same course because we don't have all the same, we have several trainers. So by the way, Miriam, uh, Marta has had not one, but two babies. She gave birth oh. to twins. <laughs> Congratulations year. to her. That's fabulous, fabulous. So we have a whole pool of trainers here. And 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 the good thing about accreditation is that it's, it's from 21 to 27 now, no? So it's on six years and you can change location, come back in another city. That is what many French teachers started to do now with Venice in edition one and Amsterdam edition two. But we care a lot about uh, insisting on the fact that you can choose your order. There's not a progression. The idea is to visit the collection of each city, the heritage of each city, and to build your project for your classroom for that. So that I, 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 I must say. What other questions do we have? Sarah, can I, can I just ask a, a question? Can you, can you yes, hear me? Please. Yes, please. Yeah, Sarah, I, I was just uh, um, wondering if you could explain like in two minutes, what are the steps to actually apply to the programs? I know there is uh, like a step for the school to be taken be before um, every single teacher can actually apply to, to the courses. Yes, Erasmus, uh, oh, maybe Miriam. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> Please. Okay, so, okay, the first thing that you actually have to do is you have to set up your school as a sending organization. So my advice is you get on to your um, national governing body and you say to them, I'd like to set the school up. Um, now, there are questions, for example, I live in Cork City, which is absolutely at the south of Ireland. And the first question is, are you in Ireland south, sorry, southeast or southwest? Now, we're bang on city centre. So they were able to come back and tell me, actually, you're in the southwest, I would think by about one street. So get on to your national agency, find out what the answers to your questions are. Once you have um, been recognized, you need to submit bank details, you need to submit legal forms. And um, now you have to have uh, electronic signatures. Your national agency will have these seminars, they will guide you through it. You just need to contact them and certainly before you do anything, get on to them. Once you have been set up as a sending organization, um, you then look around and you decide what course you'd like to do. Now, in this case, if you've already identified the course that you'd like to do, you are expected to do some kind of a project around um, the course. So starting beforehand and maybe continuing on afterwards, um, to do something to show that you have made use of the learning that you have acquired. Um, the, this is the project. So the mobility activity is the week or the six days that you'd spend in Venice, while the actual project is the, the duration of it. So for some people, it might be seven or eight months. For others, it could be 15 months. Um, it is worthwhile putting a little bit of thought into what can you use that you're already doing in the school? Or if you hear about a new initiative, is there anything that you could use out of that for your project? So um, capitalize on what you already do well and extend and, and outline that it is part of your Erasmus project. And the other thing I would say is that everything you do and everything you post, you make sure that you have your Erasmus logo or your Erasmus flag in the corner. So whatever activity you have, you put up the Erasmus flag because when your governing body comes to evaluate your project afterwards, um, it's this is what they're looking at. The Erasmus wants 
people to share their knowledge. So I am here today because part of the whole of the mobility activity is that I would share what I have learned. So if my governing body look at my next project and they hear that I have done this, which is part of um, disseminating information. So it's to your stakeholders, to your boards of management, which will be your boards of governors, to the local community. This is all really, really important. Thank you very much. Alexander, do you want to do a small conclusion? Yes, uh, yes, for sure. Well, so we have a, a thank you slide. <laughs> I also needed to do it from our social media manager uh, because we are recording the session for everyone who couldn't join. So um, I really I'm, I'm really grateful for you to uh, to be here with us. Thank you very much, Miriam. Thank you, Sara. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Matteo. Thank you all to all the participants. We are inviting you to continue our conversation in Venice, Amsterdam or Barcelona. Um, we hope that you will join us uh, next year and Erasmus Plus is an excellent opportunity. They provide, um, uh, uh, it, you know, it, they provide an excellent opportunity for all uh, teachers to do that. Um, so um, I hope to see you in uh, in one at one of our locations soon. So grazie mille and have a very good Saturday night. Can I uh, can I just add something? Sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, just for the people who maybe uh, who connected like in in the last couple of minutes that probably they were looking for the French session uh, of our open day. We are gonna start in uh, really a few minutes, so play, please stay connected because we, we are gonna be back in uh, really a couple of minutes for the French part of the presentation. Yeah, yes. A bientôt. Merci beaucoup et au revoir. <laughs> Bye. 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 All right, thank you very beaucoup. much, guys. Merci beaucoup, Bye. grazie. Bye. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Ciao.